Uh, Mark Conyers, New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. We acknowledge that tillage does some damage to soil structure. It's not an ideal. We are, we're holding to the idea of minimising tillage in our farming systems. However, if for a good agronomic reason you have to till your soil, you do not go back to square one. You do not undo all the good you've ever done from 20 to 30 years of no-till farming. You will set yourself back two to five years in terms of soil structure, and that's sad, but if you have tilled because you were going to have a poor seed bed or you needed to incorporate lime or you needed to have an integrated approach to controlling mice or locusts or slugs, you're going to have better yields as a result of that imperfection. So what we've tried to do is find out the boundary conditions of reintroducing some tillage that's beneficial in net to the farming system without doing too much damage to soil structure. The compromise, if you like. How much tillage can I use? How much damage does it do? How long does it take to recover? The story is fairly positive and constructive, I think. The trial work on the strategic use of tillage in no-till farming, no farming systems has been going since 2011. It was completed during 2016. What we have found is that any form of tillage does do damage to soil structure, which is unfortunate. The good news, however, is that yields are either not affected or improved by tillage, and the damage done to soil structure recovers in a two to five year time frame. The more fresh residues you can add to the soil, particularly a pasture or a green manure crop, they're the sort of things that hasten the recovery of soil structure and reduce that recovery time to about two years instead of up to five years in the case of stubble retention. We had four trial sites and so we can't make definitive statements about soil type and recovery time. Obviously a cracking clay will recover more quickly than a sodic clay, but we avoided sodic soils so we confined ourselves more to the red and grey soils typical of southern New South Wales. And I cannot distinguish between soil types in their recovery time. But the overriding factor clearly across those four sites was fresh residues and good root growth. The cultivation took place once at each site and then the residues were simply top dressed onto the soil. So recovery in each case whether it be a direct drilled no-till site, whether it was following scarifiers or following offset discs or a rotary hoe, recovery was from top dressed residues, but also from root growth within the soil. So recovery was hastened by good root growth. And when I say fresh residues, stubble is not a great glue for soil structure. Whereas a vetch crop brown manured or a pasture phase provide lots of nitrogen, sulphur and potassium as well as carbon. That feeds the microbes, particularly the fungi, and fungi and fine roots such as from ryegrass and subclover are very good ways of putting soil structure together. Most cultivation took place in 2012. We had some in 2011 and some in 2013. So rather than look at the timing within the year, we looked at timing between years because the seasonal conditions such as soil moisture and the time at which we were able to get in and cultivate was going to vary year to year. So we looked at a split trial, if you like, where some of the plots were cultivated in 2012 and some in 2013 and compared the seasonal effects. But again, the timing of the tillage didn't seem to matter as much as the quantity and quality of residues at the end of the season. Returning fresh organic matter residues to the soil, particularly with high fertility content of nitrogen, phosphorus, sulphur, potassium, and encouraging fine root growth in the surface soil are the two biggest factors that seem to both give a soil robust structure and assist recovery of soil structure post tillage. We did not test gypsum and lime directly as part of the cultivation treatments. However, on some sites, they had previously been limed and cultivation actually gave us large dry matter and grain yield responses because suddenly we were ameliorating acidity at below five centimetres depth 
And so rather than a direct effect of the lime or gypsum on soil structure, the effect was on improved root penetration into the acidic subsurface soil.